Back to zero. I give you the mausoleum of all hope and desire. I give it to you, not that you may remember time, but that you might forget it now and then for a moment and not spend all of your breath trying to conquer it. Because no battle is ever won, he said. They are not even fought. The field only reveals to man his own folly and despair, and victory is an illusion of philosophers and fools. William Faulkner in The Sound and the Fury I quote Faulkner because I grew up with him. Walking from the bus stop past those who relinquished all hope to the visions rendered by their drug-fueled hazes, I was headed home to an extensive library filled with books from some of our greatest academicians and philosophers. I lived in the hood, so maybe the library was called the hoodbrary, um, the ghettoary. I actually like the term ghettoary. Sounds like I'm a fancy pants that brought culture and class to a new world. I'll meet you in the ghetto area where we will read as we dine on exquisitely prepared hot dogs and blue Kool-Aid. As I opened the front door to our third floor apartment, there was my cat Harry and the bookshelf that had an expensive set of encyclopedias and volumes of books from Faulkner, Shakespeare, Eliot, Dickinson, and others. Now, don't get it twisted. We were not some super smart and well-read family with good breeding that happened to fall on hard times and had to move there from our more upscale place in which the only things we couldn't bear to part with were our books. No, my mom just liked to buy shit. This was during the days where people sold encyclopedias and books door to door. I actually recall the salesman bringing an encyclopedia once a month to our house to add to the collection. When he finally brought the last volume, I remember my mother rubbing her hand along the entire set with such pride. I didn't understand it then, but now I know how important she felt when people walked into our our apartment and saw this fancy set of books. She would force me to read these books aloud to her on a regular basis. It was torture. Later, I began reading them on my own. It eventually became okay. Then I realized that I had read several literary masterpieces before third grade. It was cool. So when I quote Faulkner, it's not arrogant obnoxiousness. I actually know him. Wait, what? Oh, now I remember what I was writing about. Right, right, right. <laughs> Resetting. Getting back to zero. I use that title with a bit of trepidation. Going back to something implies that you've been there before. Have I been content? Complacent even? I do not dare use the word happy because I can't define it. And I truly believe that once you declare happiness, everything goes wrong. I can't run the risk of getting chicken pox at my age. For right now, I will safely say that I am at zero, even killed, sipping my martinis from an actual glass instead of a red plastic cup. When I started this blog, I was all like, my ex said this to me, my ex did this to me, and my ex and his mother fell off a cliff and died instantly. Well, that last thing didn't really happen, but come on, you've been there and thought worse. But now I'm all like, My ex who? Oh, that guy. I forgot all about him. No, I wasn't heartbroken when I introduced my story to you. I was experiencing PTSD. I had fought a long and hard battle and had not come out as the victor. Neither of us did. I agree with Faulkner's assertion that victory is an illusion of fools. But I did learn a few things about myself. These past few months, I have worked harder than I have ever had to work in a long time. Details to follow in a future post. I had to save my own life and focus on me. I lost a few friends along the way, but I found myself again. I say again because I seem to reevaluate myself quite often. It's a continual rebirthing. Here's the thing about resetting. 
You don't always remember where you've been, and that's not necessarily a good thing because you don't want to keep following the same hopes and dreams that got you nowhere. Every time you create a new reality, you have to accept it. You realize that life is resilient. Sometimes it will reset without you being aware of it. One day, you may think your destiny lies in one direction, and then your position is altered, and instantly you are at three, two, one, zero. Please join us in continuing the conversation on our blog at www.dishingwiththediva.com where we will discuss the dish and read how I define my dilemma, identify my inspiration, share my story, and heal my heart.